is it going boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. Welcome back to Key West Waterman, boys and girls. My name is Aaron Young. Um, the next two videos are actually going to be a little different in the sense that I did not do any, um, I'll say topside filming. Um, to be honest, my good friends James and Lisa were in town. They come down a couple times every year and dive with me. Um, and I just really wasn't in the mood to be talkative. So I brought the underwater cameras, but I did not do any topside uh, information. So I will, I'm going to share all that in, inside these dives. Um, give you a little backstory. They had Wahoo on the brain. Uh, unfortunately, the conditions on the Wahoo spots were not clear. So I had the idea that we were going to run deep into the Gulf and try and find a little bit cleaner water, which we did. We had to run pretty far, but um, we ended up finding some cleaner water. This first spot that we're on is actually a wreck and about 90, 90 or 100 feet. Um, James and Lisa had pole spears in their hands. They were kind of being sporty for the day. They wanted to be a little more primitive, which I respect. Um, I did not have a pole spear with me, so I had a gun. This is actually the second drop of the day for me. Um, just kind of dropping and scanning, being real mellow. Um, this spot is never this clear. This is actually the second time in my life I've actually been able to even see the wreck whatsoever. Um, it's normally dirty in this area, but uh, we had some nice clean water. And you can see I dropped about 65, 60, and I kind of just pause and these African pompanos come in. Beautiful fish if you've never seen these. They're unbelievable. I didn't really engage them. I was very calm. I kind of nudged towards that one to take the shot, but um, truthfully, I didn't engage these fish, and I think that's why they were so comfortable with me. They came up to check out, check me out and see what I was doing, and I think that's kind of going to be the theme of this video is, you know, hunting without hunting. And what I mean by that is if you can master the art of not appearing to be a threat in the water, um, the fish can sense your intentions. They know what you're up to. They can tell when you're engaging them, when you're pursuing them, swimming after them, chasing them, all that good stuff. Um, so for whatever reason this day, I was just very mellow. I was feeling great. And um, these fish just came right into me. It was, it was wonderful. I'm going to be a little more raw with these next two videos, um, not chopping them up a lot, just so you can see the whole process, kind of start to finish on all the dives. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. So, Lisa, what I did was, I dropped, hold on. I dropped a 60 and sat completely still and everyone in the area swam straight to me. So here's actually how that thumbnail was born. This is James doing his thing. He kind of looks like an Autobot with his camera. This thing is a fine piece of machinery, but James is a magician. Do you want me to turn with you or just stay still? Or swim with you? Yeah, I want you to swim, swim with me. You don't have to hold him out like that. Okay. I'm going to put his info in the description. He sells prints. Go check out his Instagram. The, the guy has some incredible work. He's been published all over the planet. Um, he is really, really talented at what he does. Can't thank him enough for doing this. So got the fish in the boat. Did a few more dives. Um, Again, James and Lisa had pole spears, and we were trying to get them on one of these fish with pole spears, but if you've ever hunted with a pole spear, they are very, very difficult. You've got to get a lot closer. Fish have to be a lot more uh, friendly. Um, I did a drop here, and it, it was just like the timing kept being off. They just Every time I'd drop, they'd come in, and by the time they'd get down, the fish wouldn't come in. And I think um, James was having a tr trouble with his ear. He couldn't get down past a certain point. These fish were kind of hanging around that 70 mark. And you can see, I'm not pursuing them. I'm literally dropping to that depth and sitting there. And they just, they, they're coming up and pursuing me. I think it was curiosity. Again, I'll, I'll reiterate, they can sense that I'm not a threat. So they're willing to engage me a little more. They're coming in. They're giving me the shot, literally. 
So if you can master that hunting without hunting, you will be very successful in spearfishing. I'm going to show a short clip. A lot of you guys had asked about showing my watch after dives. Uh, here's a small clip. You can pause it if you have to. This is my watch. It tells me everything that's going on. Bottom right is my last dive, minute 26. Bottom left is my depth, 68 feet. And that number in the middle is my surface time. And I want to have, I, I, I rule of thumb like to be on the surface for double my dive, my previous dive. So my last dive was minute 26. So I'd like to be up top for at least three minutes if possible. It's pretty often that I, I don't follow that rule because I get excited. But um, So it's about an hour later. We had been trying to get James and Lisa on those fish. It just was not happening for whatever reason. Very difficult with a pole spear. Um, I did one last drop. I told them if we're allowed to have two fish, so if, if I get another shot, I'm going to take it. Again, drop straight down. They kind of come in on me and just give me the go-ahead. And this was a much bigger fish. Happy to get the stone shot. Those African pompanos are a... Uh, a challenge to fight if you ever have they're they're big and they're they're wide there's a lot of surface area on them so they they uh, they're difficult to pull up and you can see I'm kind of dragging my my reel there and when I mean dragging I don't mean pulling I mean dragging like a fishing reel I'm using my hand to just let out a little line I don't want to leave that fish too far down there because of predators but luckily I stoned it so I did not have to fight it so I get to the surface lock my reel up and start pulling this line in real quick, as quick as I can. There's This area is known for a lot of sharks. Luckily, we did not have any encounters this day. Um, but a beautiful fish. Love these African pompanos. They are very high on my list. Probably top three or four, at least, on my favorite fish to eat. And just, they're just absolutely beautiful to look at. This one ended up going, I think, just over 30 pounds, actually. A lot bigger than the first one. But that is all I have out here. Stay tuned. I'll show you what I end up doing in the kitchen with this African pompano. And I do an African pompano and wahoo sashimi head-to-head -head comparison. See you there. Thank you, buddy. So I am in the kitchen. Um, wanted to show you guys a couple things. I'm not doing a full-blown recipe on this, but I do want to show you what I did with some of these fish. Uh, and some of this is actually Wahoo from next week's episode. So if you're wondering where this Wahoo is from, tune in next week and you'll find out. So I took some of the African pompano. This is actually the ribs. Sorry, I've been eating on it. It's been so good. Uh, these are the, they have giant rib bones. So what I did, this is actually what Will told me to do. I don't smoke a lot of fish. I brined these for about 20 hours and uh, it was half brown sugar, half salt. And I smoked them on the smoker. It was about two hours. It's not a exact science. Um, about two hours with, I think I used mesquite. Turned out really well. And uh, this is actually Wahoo Belly, if you've never seen this. Uh, it's a little different texture. Some people like it, some people don't. I love it. Um, that is all meat. Just literally the belly meat of the Wahoo. Sometimes there's some worms in there. I ate one on accident. It's not a big deal. I ate one yesterday. I feel fine. Uh, but what I really wanted to do was, I had someone tell me that African pompano sashimi was better than Wahoo sashimi. And I've never had African pompano sashimi. I have had it uh, ceviche, I've had it cooked, uh, I have never eaten it raw because Wahoo is my favorite raw fish on the planet, to be honest with you. Um, and that's a bold statement for me to hear, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, both of these are six days old. That may throw you off a little bit, um, but how I keep them fresh and tasting not fishy, take them out of the bag almost every day, every other day, if I see a lot of juice in the bottom, get all the juice out of the bag and pat the fillets down. That juice is what turns those fish sour. Um, so I'm going to do a head-to-head, head head. never had um, African pompano sashimi. I've had wahoo, but 
I'm gonna taste both just because need a fair comparison. There's gonna be nothing on it. These are just thinly sliced fillets. Um, and I'm gonna give you an honest, some honest feedback here. So this is Wahoo. If you've never had Wahoo sashimi, very soft. Once it's chilled, don't eat it right off the fish. It needs to be chilled. But it almost melts in your mouth. It's just, there's no texture to it, no chewiness. Um, it's like, it's just like warm butter. It just melts. Um, so here is African Pompano sashimi. I've never, there's a couple cat hairs on there. That's all right. Um, I've never had it. So I'm very interested to see. It almost looks like it's got some lines in there. I don't know if the camera picks it up, just the fillet lines. Almost kind of looks like Yellow Jack, like it may be chewy, but we'll find out. Oh, wow. Absolutely no chewiness. No, no fishiness. Oh, Tipsy's yelling at me. You wanna come in? Come on. Yes, ma'am. Anything for you? Wow. I'm kind of mind blown. I'll be honest. Those are pretty darn close. There's no, no real difference there. Flavor's pretty much the same. Texture's pretty much the same. Um, again, these are six days old, treated properly. There is no fishiness. I would not be eating this without sauce if there was any kind of fishiness. Hey, you want some? Um, wow, well, I learned something today. But that is all I got. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks so much, seriously. Thank you so much for your time. If you're not subscribed, be sure to do so. If you haven't already, hit the like button. It helps a ton. I'm gonna keep pumping videos out and um, you guys keep watching them. I will see you soon. Later.